Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I made this gin rack on TV and even though they filmed me for hours they don't show any of the making of it really so I thought I'd show you how I did it. These are some old pine reclaimed floorboards I've got. So first I planed them on two sides then I can square up the third side then I can run them through the thicknesser to bring them down to the final thickness I want. Unfortunately gin doesn't come in a uniform bottle size, so I'm going to use my homemade Blackberry gin as a template. At 31 centimeters, this is pretty tall for a gin bottle and I'm going to make the compartment slightly wider so it can accommodate other bottles. I'm going to make the case wide enough to fit this bottle in plus a couple of glasses and room for the internal divider. So we're setting up stops on the table saw, I can cross cut all these pieces down to the correct length. I'm going to join the pieces together using box joints. So you need to set the router bit to the thickness of the material. So I lay out a bit of the wood on the top, put my square against it and draw a line. This can then go in the box cutting jig, go tight up against the comb at the top and then I can plunge the router down until the bottom of the bit just touches my line. Now it's just a noisy and messy job of cutting out all these finger joints. This jig did come with a dust collection hood, but it got clogged in about a minute, so really all the shavings just fly out onto me. It's on my long to-do list of things I'm going to sort out. So when the first row of fingers are cut, you undo the clamp, spin the board round, and then you can cut the second lot. When I'd done that on both the long sides, I could then release the clamp and move the pins up so they go between the kind of comb bit. You want to make sure the fingers are exactly central. I use a 3mm drill bit to help get the spacing right. If I'm happy with it, I can undo this stop and move it up against the board, and this would be the mark for position too. I can then do exactly the same again, but this time with the other two sides of the box. With the fingers for all sides cut, I can then sand everything down and then it's time to get it glued together. I've done finger joints before on the table saw, and because they're so thin little joints they're really hard to get the glue in, as this router jig makes it much easier. If you've spent your time setting the jig up properly, everything should slide together perfectly. And that's not gone together badly. I've cut the fingers slightly too long as it's much easier to trim them off later than to have the fingers too short. I get four clamps on it and I get a square and put it on the inside and check the corners before I finally happy and leave it to dry. Whilst it's drying I can start work on the base and the lid for it. I want the material to be much thinner for this, so I rip it down on the bandsaw. The table saw would probably leave a neater cut, but I've only got a combination blade in at the moment and it does a terrible job of ripping, so I have to pass all the parts through the thickness to clean them up. I square up one end on the pieces and then I can cut them all to the same length using a stop block. I can now glue these pieces up into panels. You might have seen me make some clamps for gluing up thin panels a few months ago and this was exactly the project I had in mind. I don't want to spoil the illusion of TV but the filming was actually done a few months before the screening. So I had to come up with this idea and practice it back in summer and then not tell anyone about it. So these clamps worked great and as I was in a tight time frame I only had four hours to make the box. Anything that made gluing up and clamping things easier was a real bonus. So I glued up two panels, one for the top, one for the bottom, and I've made them slightly oversized as we're going to come back and trim them off later. So when the box comes out of the clamps, I need to sand it on both sides so it's perfectly flat to be able to get the lid and the base on. 
This was in one of the Jimmy Duaster tips videos. Stick him some sandpaper down to a flat board and it works really well. I've got a different grit of sandpaper on either side of the board. I think 80 on one and 120 on the other. And when it's all nice and level, I can then glue the panels into place. As you can see, the panels are oversized and hang over on every side. It just makes it much easier than trying to line it up perfectly, especially when you get the clamps on and they want to pull things in one direction. Another thing about the TV series is they want to add moments of drama like you're panicking to get it done. But as you can see with this build, the times where the glue is just waiting to dry. So I spend a lot of my time sitting around drinking tea and chatting. When I put my tea down, I could then trim the box with the bandsaw. For the show, I hadn't packed the bandsaw in the boot of my car, so I used a hand plane to get it all flush. But if you have access to a bandsaw, it certainly makes it quicker. The bandsaw doesn't leave the nicest finish, so I can sand it all down, work my way up through the grits. Then using my router, I can put a round over all around the box. The next stage is to cut the box open, and I didn't have a table saw in the boot of my car either, so I actually used the router with a slot cutting bit. That worked really well, but was slightly terrifying. The table saw technique certainly works a lot better, and especially if you watch my video on Sunday about making a little shim to go in the gap. So I cut it open on three sides. And then when it's time to do the fourth side, my little shim goes in the gap, and then I can use that to hold it in place and push it through so the gap doesn't close up. The box needs an internal divider to keep the glasses and the gin separate. I'm using the table saw to nibble away a little dado. Again, for the TV, I didn't have the table saw, so I had to use a hand saw and a chisel. Which, to be honest, didn't take that much longer. I don't have a flat toothed blade in the saw, so I use this little router plane just to clean up the bottom of the cup. Then I can glue this little divider in place, which is going to keep the glasses separate. This little T-shaped piece can then get glued into the box itself. It's only the glue holding this in place because it's a nice tight friction fit. And then, because I don't have a film crew watching me, or Kirsty hassling me for gin, I can leave it overnight to dry. The next day I can get some finish on it, and I've got a tinted Danish oil. I just brush it on leave it to soak in for 10 minutes and then buff it off, so pretty nice and easy. When the oil was dry, I could start installing some hardware. So I've got these little butterfly bronze hinges. or well, they're not really bronze, they're just bronze coloured. So they get screwed into place. Then on the front, I've got these little matching catches. On the TV show, I stamped little brass nameplates, but for this, I've got these bronze card holders. This way, you can slip in a bit of paper with any name or message you want. I cut down a leather strap and then cut the edge to a nice curve, and then punch a hole in each end. Then, using brass screws, I attach this to the front of the box to be act as a little briefcase handle. And that's it all done, all within the four hour time limit. Well, apart from the eight hours sleep I had in between. Now I just can't wait to crack this gin open. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more videos.